Hello and welcome to another Blender branch tutorial. This is just a quick rendering and outputting an animation tip. First of all, I'm just gonna show you just a few basic settings to help you with a render. So I have a scene open here. This is from one of my tutorials on creating a spaceship animation scene. And if you'd like to create that, you can. But first of all, what we wanna do if, we're, if we want to render this out as an animation, there's a few tips that you might have heard of, maybe not. So if not, I figured might as well do a quick tip on it, just because I've done a lot of tutorials with animation in them. So um, you want to put your timeline to the start and end of your animation. So make sure it's ended at 300. So that's when my animation ends. Over here underneath the render settings, these are just all your basic settings for uh, rendering an animation. Now, you can choose a file format such as a movie format like QuickTime or any of these and render out your animation. And that's gonna work okay, but it's gonna have some flaws and it's really not the best way to do it. The best way to render out an animation is to use uh, a series of images and preferably a PNG because that's a uh, very a lossless format for the most part. So you want to have that selected PNG and if you're doing an animation you want to choose an output directory so um, since I've already done this animation I've already chosen one so you want to name that and select that and then underneath performance you want to change the tiles to 256 because that's pretty optimized for cycles and that's gonna help you with your rendering. Really, you can change that with any time you're doing any render in Blender uh, using cycles. The tile size 256 works very well. And then the samples, depending on how high tech of a render you're doing, the, um, you know, the higher the samples, the less noise. That's just kind of a common rule. So you can turn that up. 400 or if it's a nighttime scene you may want to go pretty high 1200 I don't know it's all up to you with how high you want those samples I know with this animation because it's mostly mostly um, live action footage I got away with just 150 samples most scenes aren't like that and the other thing is with the uh, settings underneath here with the seed clamp direct and clamp indirect this clamps down on the fireflies, the noise in your scene. You don't want to set it to too high because you'll get a little bit of distortion. But I find if you just sort of go somewhere around six for each of those, five or six, it really helps with your scene. Just sort of clamps down on those little fireflies and uh, that works really well. You can test out what it looks like with you know higher renders um, and or higher clamping but you'll notice some distortion and blurring going on. So now once you have those basic settings sort of all put together and you've chosen an output directory for your animation, the resolution here is sort of the last thing you want to pay attention to. If you're rendering a full HD video, you'll want to go 100% because that's basically this percentage right here is 100% of the 1920 by 1080. So a lot of people don't realize that that's rendering out the full HD. When you just go 50%, it's actually sort of half of that. And that, now that works fine for YouTube and whatnot, but you really get the full, the full HD effect when you have that at 100. Okay, so now you have all that in order and you're ready to just go ahead and hit animation. And I'm not gonna hit that because I've already rendered my animation. But once it's finished rendering, obviously it renders out a series of PNGs and it's just a, a, a bunch of pictures. And the advantage to that is you can go through at any time and you can stop your animation. And you know if you rendered 20 PNG images, you'll have a folder full of 20 frames. And if you wanna stop it, work on something else with Blender, you can come back later, pick up, set the star frame to frame 21, and it'll just pick up right there where you left off. So that's a huge advantage to using, using PNGs as opposed to a movie file when you're rendering an animation. So then, say you've rendered all 300 of your frames, what you can do then is come up to render and play rendered animation. And 
I guess something happened with mine. Maybe it's offline. Um, but a, the Blender Play Animation window will come up, and you'll be able to watch your animation, even though it's just a series of PNGs. But that's not good enough if you're wanting to outpu output that as a video format that you can upload to YouTube or something like that. So to do that, you just go File, make a new project, change it from Default to Video Editing. And now this is the video editor inside of Blender. You could use Final Cut Pro, iMovie, whatever, but you might as well use Blender because it has a great one. Now, now you just come down to Add, and I believe it's Image, and then you come to wherever it is that you have saved your series of PNGs. So I think it's this one right here. And now there you go, this is what you'll have. You'll have just a bunch of well, exactly 300 frames worth of images. If I show you the thumbnail view, there you go. That's the entirety of your timeline in pictures. So if we just press A to select all of them and add image to strip, you can see Blender figures out that this is a video clip. It's a series of images. And you can play it and watch it right there in the video editor. That's pretty cool. Very cool. If you do this in other programs, it, it'll actually line out a series of images, and it's a lot, e lot more of a pain to work with. But uh, Blender recognizes that it's just a video, so that's cool. Now, except since we opened a new scene, the new end frame is at 250. We want that to be at 300. So there we go. Now it will play the entirety of our animation. So we have to make sure to set new start and end frames. Okay, now all that's left, we can go back to default. And without changing any settings in our cube, if I hit render, it's gonna show that frame of our video. So it won't show what's in the cube because we have our video editor all loaded up. So now this is the final step of creating the video file. Now it's time to come down here and choose a QuickTime file or AVI, whatever it is you prefer. I'm going to use QuickTime. And the encoding you can leave at JPEG or you can choose any other of these. YouTube likes H.264. So if you're uploading to YouTube, you'll want to use that. Uh, the quality you can turn all the way up. It's up to you. The RGB and RGBA. This is just um, the A is if you were to render this out with an alpha channel in the background. In other words, if you're wanting you know, something that's going to be composited with footage in a different program or something like that, and you have an alpha channel behind an object, you'll want to check that. If not, you can just leave it at RGBA, and that's perfectly fine. And now, um, all these, all the other settings don't really apply that much because uh, we're rendering a video file, except you do want the 100%. So now that that's all set to go, you'll once again want to choose an output directory, which I'm just going to do my desktop, hit accept, and then press animation. And now it's rendering out this full video file. And it goes pretty quickly because we've already rendered out the images. Really, it just sort of ticks through the timeline. And you basically just kind of have to wait for it. But it does go pretty quickly compared to actual rendering. And once that's completed, Oh, I, I should note, <clears throat> there's no audio down here. I just selected no audio because, I mean, there was no audio to this. If you added audio inside the video editor in Blender, which is a great idea, Blender has a pretty powerful video editing program, you'll want to make sure you pick an audio codec that makes sense. I know AAC uh, works well, but I think it has some loss. I know here there's an Apple lossless file. But, I mean, audio is pretty small, so compressing it isn't a huge deal. Um, you can leave it pretty lossless and get away with it. So now we're just waiting um, till that's completed. And it's almost done. You can see it goes pretty quickly, rendering out 300 frames in a video file. And then there, if you just go and find wherever you saved that, which is right here, you now have a .mov file, beautiful, all put together 
it's the full HD since we did the hundred percent and our spaceship takes off like that. And then you have that file that you can go and edit, put it on YouTube, upload, do whatever you want. And you don't have any quality missed whatsoever because we did the series of PNGs first and then put those into a QuickTime file format. So there it is. Thank you for watching. I hope, uh, I hope it was useful, these quick tips. I know a lot of it's familiar, but again, just wanted to have that out there as um, a good resource for you to use. So happy blundering and thanks for watching.